Hey, hey, it's Crazy Cephalopoda, and we're playing a game called Stifled, where apparently every noise that you make attracts a horrible metaphor that is somehow in the form of a baby that haunts you. I hope that makes sense. Um, we're going to hop back in and try our darndest to make as much noise as possible without being killed. We got into some kind of car wreck. Our wife, I think, was taken by the baby metaphor, and then we ended up in a sewer, and now we're just crawling around on our hands and knees. And all kinds of manner of garbage. Wait, is this the car again? Now we're back home. My guy's got some kind of problem for sure. Some mental health needs checking up on. I don't know why we have to echolocate like a bat. Or why our wife keeps buying children's stuff when she's not pregnant. That doesn't seem normal. Honey, I'm home. Nope. I'm not messing with that. Why is this a different house? This is not the one we started in. No means no. Bryce, just no. End of discussion. Something she didn't want to talk about? Maybe, uh, the creepy baby toys that she keeps around the house? Perhaps? Could that be it? Not home. So we moved from the first house to here, I guess. I'm speculating. This is me speculating. I wonder what I do as a living. Uh-oh. I can't read any of this stuff. It's all been wiped out. I wonder, maybe we had a kid and it died? Victim of brutal murder case. Oh, God. Found next to dead parents staring blankly and non-responsive to first responders. Not responsive to any external stimulus when first admitted. Multiple child psychiatrists declined treating him after a few sessions. Started talking again last month. Has totally no memories of the murder. Age four. Is this a kid that we adopted? Sexually transmitted disease. Anxiety, depression, head injury, recurrent headaches, other handicap needs, aspirin, and something that's been crossed out that I can't see. I wish I could read the bottom. Something, something required. Save Atlantis required. Okay, is this a kid or is this like my medical records? Whatever, seems perfectly fine. In the context of everything else that's going on, I'm not too concerned. What is this? Oh, are we in like a psych ward or something? What's happening? You're not going to scare me because I know what's coming. That was a pretty song. Let's do it again. God dang it. Why are we playing this game? Martha! You're acting like a fool. What am I supposed to do?
Just checking. <laughs> Not interested. Not interested. Not terribly, anyway. More interested with the downstairs room. Seems fine. Yeah. What is this? Perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. My guy is having some serious problems, and the metaphor is very vague and abstract, and I'm not sure I understand. Other than babies are scary, and you need to be quiet. <coughs> oh. I don't remember where I came from. dolphin make ah <laughs> what did i just do i just scream like a man ah <laughs> yeah dolphins i heard a dolphin once and it was like ah <laughs> i don't know i've never actually heard a dolphin I can't tell what it's saying. You don't love me? Maybe. down this way. Anyway, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and C. Oh, my wife's in there. I think. I see somebody in there anyway. This is all your fault, somehow. What are you doing in there? Yeah, you silly goose. What are you doing up in there? What are you doing up in there? I'll get you out. Don't worry about it. Ain't nothing but a thing. It's fine. Honestly, you know, this happens. When you're married, you know, sometimes you just gotta crawl around in the dark and throw rocks. And watch out for a big mutated baby that cries. It's just the nature of the game. Specifically in your vows, you know, you say till death do us part or till giant baby kill me. Not everybody includes the giant baby part in their vows, but I think that's an important commitment to make. You know, if we're gonna be together forever. Never mind.
Okay. Anyway, back to what we were saying. The alphabet is also very important. That's another thing you gotta do every day. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, and T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. All of them. All of them you gotta say multiple times a day. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When you tip me over, I will shout. Rose, get out of the cage. Let's go home. little beeps that's how you get through it and you just walk right next to the wall and Just hang in there. I think we're out of the area where it is anyway. Okay, well that was stressful for no reason, but uh, no clue at all if we have succeed. Oh God, please. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Go away, go away, go away, go away. No, thank you. No, thank you. Not interested. Oh, not again. I'm an idiot. Uh, why did I ever think that any of this was going to go my way, huh? Why did I not learn? Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my ragtime gal. La, 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 la. I don't know the words. What other song should I sing? Twinkle, twinkle, little star.
plop. Plop, 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 plop. I'm looking for sound. That sounded dumb. Looking for sound. I'm trying to flip plop my way to where my wife is. That is a cage. Is there some bigger metaphor here that I'm just like not understanding, not comprehending? be any louder? The answer is obviously yes, but uh... just a staircase in the dark to nowhere. So how are you guys doing? You uh, been playing any sports or after school activities? Your extracurriculars are really important. Anyway, <coughs> I'm just talking, you know, making conversation and whatnot. I'm coming right over. <coughs> anyway. My guy has a really bad time of talking whenever there's something literally right next to him. Is he not at all questioning, like, why am I seeing in black and white and only when there's noise? Why is my wife in a cage? Why are these babies chasing me? Hello! Looking for the stairs! 
would hate to fall to my death in here. Oh no. That would be terrible. That's not my wife. Let's get you out of there. Is that my wife? Who saw that coming? My wife is a psycho. Who would have guessed? Surely it wasn't all the baby toys and other things that she had laying around. I have a whole wine cellar now. <laughs> My guy's got an alcohol problem. We upgraded from a booze office to a wine cellar. I was gonna say, is that a mattress down in the wine cellar? I just live down here. Most people will remember their childhood homes with fondness and memories. I'm no exception. It's the place where I grew up, exploring the wider, wonderful world one step at a time. I remember the days of wandering in the woods behind my house and exploring every nook and cranny. It was during my exploration trips where I first met Kane. I said two, what was that? Two cheerful start. Looking at some old f photographs brought my mind back to my childhood days, and in particular, a mystery that till this day I haven't been able to solve. It involves a childhood friend of mine called Kane. Kane was a sickly looking boy, sallow skinned, and was always having trouble keeping up. Yet he always followed me in my escapades into the woods, despite looking like the next breeze could blow him over. Too direct. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night, immediately awake. I shot a quick look around my small apartment and saw nothing out of place. That was weird, I thought to myself as I climbed out of bed, thinking of getting some water to drink. I shuffled into my small kitchen in the dark and poured out some water into a glass. As I brought the glass up to my mouth, my nose got a whiff of something that I thought I'd forgotten. Something of ages past, the smell of death. Oh boy. Let's go get a glass of water. Hooray. Huzzah. I love my dimly lit, leaky house. That's not at all creepy. Rose? Not at all creepy, as I was saying. I love the fact that my wife is definitely not psychotic. <laughs> Do your own laundry. Got it. Um, darling. You forgot to get this started. I'll get it for you. Don't worry about it. What could be up here? Nothing seems awkward or out of place. What is happening? Mice in my kitchen in my canned spaghetti. No, this is unacceptable. Oh God. Oh, my wife, always starting to cook and then forgetting. Spray paint. Where is my canned spaghetti? Where's my cans of spaghetti, woman? Martha, <laughs> Rose, did you eat all my spaghetti? That's a problem for both of us. Rose, we're gonna have to talk about your spaghetti eating habits. play piano. That's beautiful. Great. I love it. I love that not only do we have mice, but they're musical mice. Why not? It's whimsical and fun. Yep. Seems normal. Maybe she's trying to like seduce me and she set all these candles 
rose petals and black tar footprints to lead me to where she wants me. And who am I to say no, really? I'm coming! I've clearly read the messages that you left for me. I know exactly what you have in mind. Hello, is this Mr. Ridley? I'm calling from Eden, and I would like to talk to you about setting up your appointment. We have also mailed you the required documentation, and would require for them to be read and signed before our appointment. Please do call back when you receive this message. Thank you, and have a nice day. Okay, so let's see. It says we're looking for a female, ages four to six. I think no preference, blue eyes, Caucasian, no religion, doesn't say. So that's our application for our kiddo. I wonder why. Hey, Dave and Rose, is everything all right? We've been knocking on your door for the past two nights, but no one answered to, though the lights were on. You guys have been missing the town hall meetings and everyone's getting worried. Hope you guys are not in any trouble. You know where to find us if you guys need help. The wife, for whatever reason, didn't like the neighbors. Alright, darling, you gotta leave me some more signs so I can figure out how to get to you. I see. I'm coming. Here I come. Very eager. Do not disturb. Well, it's my house too, Rose. I pay half the bill. Best in writing. Dave, we have some concerns about your recent work performance. You've been submitting shoddy work and acting generally distracted. If you have any problems at all, do feel free to talk about them. Dave, it has been brought to my attention that you've been missing multiple deadlines and were troubled by your dipping performance. Though we deeply empathize with your familial situation, we cannot willfully ignore your unproductivity any much longer. I'm officially putting you on a two weeks break as of today to settle all your problems. Gee, thanks boss. Dave, congratulations on your work on the advert we've recently put out. Seems like the client really liked it and it's been quite well received. Seems like the decision to put you on break for that two weeks is pretty effective, huh? In any case, congratulations on the great work, and we hope to see more of it soon. Dave, the company is very impressed with your recent performance, and we're thinking of filing you into our recently vacated position of senior editor. We really hope to bring you onto the company in a more permanent fashion, and if you're willing, we can talk through the terms. That's great. I still don't know what this is for. Well, isn't that great? Oh, maybe I write stories and this is my story that I'm writing. It says, a loud knocking sound woke me up from my slumber. It was deep in the night with only the usual nighttime sound from the street outside. I sat up on my bed, rubbing sleep from my eyes, wondering in my half-awake state if I had just dreamt that sound. I looked around my room and saw what I expected. My room, unchanged, and nothing seems to be awry. Must have been dreaming. I thought to myself as I made to settle back into bed. At this moment, I spotted something odd. My bedroom door was slightly ajar, which might be why I didn't notice it at first. That immediately set off alarm bells in my head since I've never slept without my door closed and locked, ever. A sudden chill crept up my spine, but I convinced myself that I must have forgotten to close it the night before. I left my bed and went to shut the door as fast as humanly possible and jumped back under my covers like the devil himself was after me. After a few deep breaths and nothing happening, I chuckled a bit at my silliness and tried going back to sleep. Just when I was about to fall asleep, a loud knocking sound jolted me wide awake again. Fear hammered through my veins. The sound was much closer. Much, much closer. The sound was right under my bed. Great story, Dave. Anywho. I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. Is 
this the bedroom slash painting studio? She's probably going through like some depression and loss, getting over grief. Dear Rose, I miss you so, so incredibly much. Hold on, I can't hear. Oh God. I gotta turn that radio off. Too much going on. I can't think. Where is the sound even coming from? I don't know. Help, help me locate it. <laughs> oh, this? Thank you. I miss you so, 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 so incredibly much. You can't even imagine. Well, maybe you can, but I definitely miss you much more than you miss me. I'm doing well here since we've just reached, I haven't seen, we haven't really seen any action yet. Hope that would hold, though there shouldn't be any problems regardless. They will rue the day they face the lean, mean fighting machine, AKA me. Jokes aside, I'm really doing well here. And once my stint is over, I'll be right back by your side. Love you loads, take care of yourself, and don't you run off with another man before I get back. Love, Dave. It's from me. That's so sweet. Honey. Oh, honey. Is that hair? Serm. Serm. What is that? I don't know how to turn it upside down. Hold on. I don't really know what it is, like antidepressants or something maybe. <laughs> Darling, you forgot your baby doll. I'm not telling you what to do, it's just a suggestion. Uh, to hell with your suggestion! What's happening? Ooh, everything's changing. like that. What's going on here? What's going on? It's changing. She still within me? I don't know. She's still within me? Maybe. Like I said, to me, it's like something about depression and I turned you off for a reason. You know, the battles that you face when you're sad. <gasps> stop going through my papers, Rose! Stop it! I need those to work! Ah! Oh, the internet. Hooray. Time's Toll by Dave Ridley. Till death do us part, that we promise with all our hearts. I loved you then and still do, yet it's hard to show. Time has taken its toll, our feelings have eroded. Maybe all that is needed is a little more effort from us both. Holding hands like we used to, talking about nothing like we used to, walking together like we used to, never again, 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 he types really fast, to be honest. It's kind of enviable. And we're in another house now? Or I have more papers? I'm not quite sure. But I think I'm going to call it here. <laughs> There's been a lot more reminiscing, I guess, on this particular part. Um, you get the feeling like there's some kind of problem in their relationship and perhaps it centers on some inability to have a family. And the wife obviously seems to be going through something like depression, which I can relate to. So it's interesting. I'm not quite sure how much really there is to this, but we'll keep going in the next one. So if you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. And otherwise, I hope you have a great day.